Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God, and ye shall keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord which sanctify you. For every one that curseth his father or his mother shall be surely put to death. He hath cursed his father or his mother. His blood shall be upon him. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and that when they have chastened him will not hearken unto them, then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him and bring him out unto the elders of his city and unto the gate of his place. And they shall say unto the elders of his city, This our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. And all the men of his city shall stone him with stones that he die. So shalt thou put evil away from among you, and all Israel shall hear and fear. God's law is pretty clear. Yet we have issues when it comes to verses like these. People like to disregard the Bible completely because they feel that the morals that they have don't line up with God and thus they need to make God more like them instead of becoming more like God who would appear to be a moral monster with this would you agree the question is does this really say what the moral monsters are trying to make it say first we have to understand that if we read the scriptures in context it is not saying that you should stone children. If you look in Deuteronomy, when it tells you that you would actually stone a person, a key part of the verse says that they will say that our child or our son is a glutton and a drunkard. If you are a glutton and a drunkard, you're not a child. This is a person who has long since been grown. You are a child to the mother and father, but this does not mean that you are a little child. So people can try and use this to talk about if your children don't uh, turn off the television when you ask them. This means that you will take them to be stoned. This is not what this is saying. What it's actually saying is that if there is a person who is a son, okay, it says a son. It doesn't say a little child there's a person who is a son, the child of a mother and father, okay? And if this person is disobedient to the mother and father, what does that mean? This means that this person is a detriment to the society, okay? This person is out there being disobedient to authority. Why? Because they don't even follow the voice of their own mother and father. And this should let you know about certain things that are going on today. Kids are being extremely disobedient to parents, which is what Romans 1 says, if they have the parents there. Because you know that we also have issues where there are absentee fathers, absentee mothers, and all of that. But they have no regard for any authority. If you cannot even respect your mother and father, then what makes you think that they will respect any laws of the land? This is not a child who is being disobedient because they didn't go to bed on time. This is a person who has grown up and has no regard for society. What God is saying is that they have become a cancer to the society. And what you need to do is stop this person before they do harm to the whole city. Although it seems harsh, but in reality, that's what we would call the death penalty. This person has committed so many crimes, and no matter what you do, even their own mother and father's voice has no bearings on this person's conscience. This person is going to continue to commit crimes and hurt people. So what Deuteronomy is saying is, is that as a mother and father, yes, you need to be the one to bring this person to the elders of the city, and they have to be stoned. They have to be killed. They have to be given the death penalty because imagine if you had a serial killer and just because that's your child, well, I'm going to house that person. No, you need to bring that person to justice and you need to say that this person does not even listen to me. Therefore, before another person gets killed, another person gets raped, another person, another child gets molested, you need to declare 
that this person is a glutton and a drunkard. They don't care. They are hurting society. And yes, the death penalty needs to be fulfilled there. That's how that was. Now, granted, it doesn't mean that that's exactly how we would handle it today. But yes, there are times where the death penalty is needed and the death penalty is exercised. It doesn't seem strange to us because that's our culture, but they had a different culture back then. I want to also point out something else to you because there was another scripture in there. In that same chapter, there are things such as don't commit adultery with another man's wife. There are also things in there about not sleeping with animals, okay? And in that chapter, God says that he sees the other nations that have done this and he's judged them. He's abhorred them. So you should not be like those nations. So for those of you who believe that the death penalty is non-existent, it should not exist, God also brings up the fact that disobedient children, he's not talking about, remember, it's not specifically a child who doesn't eat his vegetables, okay? He's talking about a person who is a detriment to society, who continues to hurt society no matter what you say and do. He's talking about that type of person should be put to death, okay? He said that other nations have done these things and I have abhorred these nations. Now, those nations were not the children of Israel. They did not have the law. Yet, God judged them for that. God judged Sodom and Gomorrah for their homosexual lifestyles. Okay? God judged them for marrying man to beast. Even though they didn't have a specific Levitical law or Deuteronomy, or Deuteronomy law that said that this is bad, God still judged them. God judged the world in Noah's day, even though they didn't have a written law. Why? Because these type of laws are written on the hearts of people. When you are a detriment to society, you know that you are worthy to be put out, to be killed. We know this. We have to try and force ourselves to believe that these things are right. Because it goes against the moral law. A person who is disobedient and disrespectful to authorities, okay, who constantly does not follow any of the rules, they're a drunkard, they're a glutton. People don't usually stay drunk by themselves. They stay drunk and they go outside and they cause problems. They cause hit and run accidents or complete accidents and they kill the other person and they are still alive and these things happen. God is saying that these are a detriment to society. And he judged other nations for these kinds of things without written laws. Therefore, it's written on our hearts. So we can say that the Levitical law is not in place today, but specifically Leviticus chapter 20 still is. Specifically, Deuteronomy 21, 18 through 21, that is still in place. If someone has a stubborn son, rebellious son, death is at your door. You are being judged. And a lot of things that are happening in our nation today is judgment. It is God forsaking you. A lot of people who are being rude and disrespectful to every kind of authority, not just police, but their parents, but their teachers, but the government itself. You don't pay your taxes. You don't, you don't do any of these things. You don't want to live in a society where that instead you come against and say that they're the bad guys. Judgment comes upon you with this. And it doesn't matter what society you live in, judgment happens. You don't need a Levitical law to tell you that sleeping with an animal is wrong. Likewise, you don't need a Levitical law to tell you that if you continue to disobey your parents and then dishonor and disobey your teachers and then dishonor and disobey the government, that death is your judgment. You don't need a Levitical law for that. So let's be careful and let's honor God's word in context, and let's see how we get blessed, because there are also blessings that are in Leviticus and Deuteronomy that we also want to take part in. I hope that this has blessed you. I hope that this has cleared up. Your